Hi everybody! I'm so glad you're here today. This video topic I am super excited about, and I actually got a lot of requests for this one, which really excites me too. Um, so we're talking about fall lip and cheek. Lip and cheek combos. I've got two distinct color schemes that I want to focus on that I really like for fall. One side of it is kind of like the warm and toasty shades, and one side of it is berry. So I'm going to recommend some blushes and some lip colors that are in both of those categories. I really feel like I've picked things that are for everyone. We've got all price ranges, we've got all levels of intensity, and a neat thing too is that you can really combine these color schemes as well. So they make a nice monochromatic look, you know, when you plan out that toasty cheek and you put on the warm and toasty lip with it, that's great, but these colors mix so very well. So keep that in mind, you don't just have to stick in one place with it all. And before we get started, I'll let you know what my base makeup is, and I'll reference some of the blushes and lip colors that I'm wearing too, but I'm I'm wearing my L'Oreal True Match Hyaluronic Tinted Serum as my foundation. For concealer, I just wanted to pull out something I hadn't used in a while. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect. By the way, I'm light 2-3 in this stuff, which I have used so much of this. I'm so proud. In this, I'm Ivory Rose. Somebody was raving about this recently. I like this concealer from a coverage perspective, but I don't always like the way it appears on my under eye area. And then I'm testing out the new Huda Easy Bake and Snatch Powder so like a pressed baking powder. I have the shade Cupcake. Looks like this, and I've got that setting my under eye T-zone area. I've got M Cosmetics Summer, um, the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick in Summer. That's what I've got contouring my face. I have a couple of the colors I'm gonna recommend layered on the cheeks, but you can see we've topped off with kind of a berry look. We'll get there, and on the lips, which I'll probably be switching out um, as I do some try-ons, but just so you know, my starting point here for the lips, I put on my CoverGirl Clean Fresh Balm in the shade Bliss You Berry. So it's kind of a black honey looking lip balm. And then I sort of enhanced that, went around it, added a little color with my Superstay Matte Ink Crayon in the shade Settle For More. I love that name. A little bit of that has worn off as I've had some coffee this morning. And on the eyes, I'm wearing the Tarte Honeysuckle Palette. I did a whole video about this little set, which actually comes with a lip liner and a Maracuja Juicy lip color. This is a great complement to both color schemes we're talking about today. This has the little bit of warmth, this has the berry, they give you a nice berry blush in it as well. This is one of my top holiday picks really right now. And by the way, more holiday reviews will be coming. I just got in some other uh, little gift sets from Sephora that I'll probably be talking about next week. First off, the warm and toasty kind of color scheme. I really love this for fall. If you like a pumpkin spice type of look coming out in your makeup, I think you'll really enjoy some of these shade options. And first off, I'm going to talk about the cream products that can very easily double as cheek and lip. So that really makes it easy for a nice monochromatic look. Um, the first thing I'll mention is the Persona stick in the shade Teddy. This stick, every time I roll it up, I'm like, you know, it, it just looks like maybe it's a soft shade trying to be a bit of a bronzer, but it is so beautiful on the cheeks. I'm actually wearing it under the berry blush that I have on today. It gives the most beautiful look. It gives you this toasty kind of like dirty peach color by the time it's all blended out. And when you put it on the lips, think like kind of deep nude. It's really, really pretty. If you're a big fan of Persona, but you've just kind of been overlooking Teddy because you're not sure what it's going to do, it's so nice. And I'm going to link below to any video I have applying these specific products because I know I've used this in a video. It's just so hard for me to exhibit all of these things in this video. But I can show that on the lips. So let's take off of this. By the way, when you're doing a try-on video, face wipes are your friend. You can get the stuff taken off so well there. So here's Teddy on the lips, if this gives you any indication. See how that completely transformed the look? We're talking deep nude with a little bit of warmth. It's like kind of a peachy tan, okay? Next product along these lines, a little bit rosier, and it can have the same lip and cheek function. I love the Neutrogena Multi-Use Stick. The shade is Temptation, and it's, as far as I know, the only shade that they sell. And this is a beautiful texture, actually pretty comparable to the Persona. It has some moisture in it, um, a beautiful glide across the skin, and let's actually leave a swatch here of Teddy so you can see the two side by side. See how much more rosiness is in the Neutrogena? Neutrogena stick. And again, I know this has been used in a video before, but I'll put it on the lips. I feel like there's kind of a soft rust thing 
coming out of this one. So that makes me think again with the warm toasty vibe, really low maintenance look, very easy, beautiful to coordinate your lip and cheek that way. And then finally the e.l.f. putty blush. This is in the shade Maldives. This putty blush is such a nice rich color. Um, I'll swatch it out here on my hands and this has a different texture. I can just tell as I swatch it. Compared to those sticks from Persona and Neutrogena that have that moisture, this has kind of a smooth matte glide. In comparison to those, it almost has a cream to powder feel, but look at that richness there. Okay, this is beautiful sheared out on the cheeks. I'm going to show it to you on the lips as well. I don't know if a lot of you have thought about using your putty blushes this way, but they give you that pretty like matte blotted lip look. It's so nice. I've done this with several different colors and I think it's absolutely the prettiest with the deeper shades. It feels so smooth. Look at that rich toasty color. We're really getting into it now. You know, these shades, a little bit softer. I know not everybody's into going super dark, but I love this kind of tone. This is the essence of what this color scheme is about. A couple of powder blushes I'd like to mention as well from the L'Oreal Infallible line. This is probably the newest one to me that I'm mentioning out of all this stuff, the Daring Rosewood shade. Um, this is really interesting. It might be one where you glance over it, you're like, what's that gonna be like as a blush? Well, in an opaque swatch, it looks very pigmented and it looks kind of like a true warm brown, but sheared out on the skin, you're getting that beautiful kind of warm toasty vibe. These are matte pure color blushes blushes and they have a range so you can wear them more intense or you can wear them very very sheared out. I love the elf blush brush to apply those and as far as applying these to the cheeks I like a Sephora 56 okay dense brush like that. This is an absolutely beautiful blush. I do feel it meshes in well with a lot of different color schemes you might go for on the eyes if you wanted to rock a berry eye and then put this on the cheeks it works and then I so love Benefit Terra. I mean I've been talking about this one ever since these blush came out their new like round of box blushes we got to get it in focus here because you got to notice do you see the tiny goat do you see the goat it's up there. Tara's kind of reminding me of the L'Oreal Infallible blush that I just mentioned, only more rosiness. And there's actually like a satin finish in this one. So I swatched it right there and it's crazy. I never thought it actually looked that rosy, but there's much more brown in the L'Oreal Infallible. They describe it as a golden brick red blush and it's just so unique. There are not a lot of blushes that are made looking like this and it's absolutely stunning. Now we've got some lip colors to share. So let's just get, this off. Warm and toasty vibes. Where do we begin? Got a couple glosses, a couple lipsticks, lip liners. I will mention my Hard Candy lip liner in Kiss and Tell. I think this is an essential for this color scheme. I love this so much. You're getting the lip liner on one end and the lip brush on the other. Lip brush is great when it comes to blending this shade into other colors on your lips. Um, the lip liner goes on nice and smooth, has great staying power comparable to Revlon Color Stay lip liners. This is what it's looking like, kind of warm and toasty and just the perfect accent really to any nude or neutral type of lip. So let me make that a little bit thicker so you can see the color better. There's some rosiness in it, some depth. I just feel like it's a great partner to some of these other things I'm going to be talking about. Um, also, we just talked about this earlier this week, the LA Colors Gel Lip Liner in the shade My Favorite Nude. This one has a little less rosiness in it and think more like a deep tan. I have to mention probably my all-time favorite shade of the Superstay Matte Ink Crayons. This is is called Live on the Edge, and this is like a nice brick color. I pull this into so many looks just to finish things off, to add in that little bit of richness. It's right here, and you know, it looks kind of burgundy. You might think, is this berry? Are we already into the berry color scheme? No, it really, to me, feels like it has a lot of brown in it and a little bit of red. And any of these products I've mentioned, you know, you can fill out your entire lips with them. You can top them with these different lipsticks or glosses and just get a really pretty long wearing look. Again, Live on the Edge, your deepest kind of brick tone. My favorite nude is the most truly nude type of color, but a little bit deeper than a classic nude. And then Kiss and Tell has that little bit of rosiness in it, but still I think a good amount of warmth. Got a couple lipsticks here to talk about. I've been loving this one from Merit, you guys, and look at the packaging. There's some packaging from Merit where I'm thinking you went kind of cheap with it. Like their bronzer stick, it feels 
most just like it should be weightier and heavier and more luxe. But the lipsticks are very luxe, very expensive feeling. I love the way the cap is there. And I've had this shade called Tiger. And one of you guys said, actually, make sure you try a Merit lipstick. And I'm really glad I did. I love the way this is constructed. I also like that it's a soft, creamy lipstick, but yet I have no issues with that actual bullet moving around and bumping up against the side of the lipstick tube. So we love to see that. But let's go ahead and put this on so you can see the warm toastiness. This really makes me think pumpkin spice without being too orangey. Look at this. Mmm, it gives you that little bit of shine. Can you see that? I feel like the color is fairly opaque on the lips. I guess I probably did a couple passes through. It looks so pretty, really, with the cheek that I have. See how we say the combination of berry and toasty can work really well? Just a gorgeous shade all on its own, nothing else required. I love that. And then from Revlon, the Super Lustrous line, I pulled out Toast of New York, and I actually thought it would be pretty similar to Tiger from Merit, but actually it's got a little bit more red in it. Can you see those two side by side? So let's try this on. And by the way, if you're wondering about the formula here, it's a cream, a classic cream lipstick formula with a little less moisture in it than the Merit. See how there's just like a little bit more of a cinnamon spice kind of vibe with this one, right? A little more red coming out. I can definitely see the difference between this and Tiger, but I love them both, and I just thought they were both worth mentioning. And while I've got kind of a base color on here, I do also want to mention the LA Colors Moisturizing Lip Gloss in Topaz. Tickled Pink is another good option. If you watched the Dollar General video, you got the lowdown on these already, but something like this to kind of accent your lip color with just a little bit of added sheen and glow there on the center of the lower lip. It just adds a little something extra. And then if it were just me, you know, getting ready to leave the house, let's say I just put on that Toast of New York and then I did that little gloss thing and then I might grab out Live on the Edge and just take a little bit of that to sort of fully define. Maybe add a little more darkness to the look. You're seeing the whole look come together. Also, I got a little zit right here in the outer corner of my mouth. Also, it's that time of the month, so yay. Look at this. Mmm. The spicy lip. Toasty, spicy. We love that. Oh, I just absolutely love the way that came together. And then I got a few glosses to share. We have, like, nude. We have rusty, and we've got, I think, a real rusty long wear option, too. Cat on my lap now. Um, the Lifter Gloss in the shade, I think it's literally called Rust. Very well named. It has that rusty look with a teeny, tiny golden shimmer particle in it. It's so opaque. You know how some of these Lifter Glosses, like, they're more about topping things off. They're more about just adding the shine. This one has a lot of full color. And I always am careful not to get too much of the lifter gloss on my lips at one time. The doe foot or the buck foot they gave us with this holds a ton of product, way more than I find I need, but there's rest. Mmm, bringing in the red, but in a very fall-like way, okay? We're not in holiday red mode yet. We're in fall spicy rust mode, spicy cinnamon kind of lip, okay? Mm. And then this was mentioned in the favorites video, and I found myself wearing it over the weekend when I was dressed up in my deer costume <laughs> for the trunk or treat. Yes, I did full-on deer makeup, and the lip I chose was this pretty one right here. A deer probably doesn't wear a deep berry. Deer is going with nude. This is the Rimmel Stay Plumped, and the shade name on this is Spiced Nude. This is a true all-in-one lip product. It gives you the opaque color of a lipstick. It gives you the gloss-like shine. You find you have the precision out to the outer part of your lip like a liner might give, and it's plumping too, but not in a painful way, in kind of a cinnamony sort of way. So I thought I would mention this here because not everyone's into the things that really take you to the cinnamon spice place. You might want something that's like a nude with a little depth. And that's exactly what this is. A nude with a little bit of depth. A spiced nude, as it is accurately named. Doesn't that give you kind of a fall feel as well? And the shine, and also the texture that does not feel like it's gonna drift outside the lips. I mean, this wore so well for me. I did the trunk or treat thing, Kitten, do not scratch my wall. I don't think I touched it up. Like, even after some shine had worn down, I still had color, and that's impressive for sort of a nude classification lip product. One more thing in this 
color scheme before we move on to our berry friends. And that is the Super Stay Vinyl Ink, and it is called Vinyl Ink, right? Yeah. And this shade is called Extra, and they have I think a handful of different nudish type colors that could really be great for fall. But this color called Extra, let me get it on. So this is very long wear, but it comes off as having a little bit of shine at first. I think this is so pretty and it kind of puts that glam twist on your look just immediately once I see it going on. And it feels like the Lifter Gloss in Rust just in a long wearing option. These wear super well. Again, they start out looking like they've got some shine. The shine doesn't hang on there extremely long, but this can get you through a good chunk of the day with very even staying power. Anybody who's used a lot of liquid lipsticks knows that evenness in the staying power is sometimes hard to come by. You'll have patches kind of wearing down. These are very, very good about lasting well. I just think it's funny that I picked basically the identical shades in two different formulas, but that wraps up the spicy, um, warm, toasty, I think cinnamon kinds of shades for the lip and cheek. And now we're gonna move into the berry color scheme. We're moving on to berry. I got that lip color removed as well as I could, but it was already starting to lock in. But my real inspiration with the berry stuff are my beautiful mums. I have the absolutely most beautiful mums right now in front of my house and it took them so long to like get in bloom but once they did my goodness is the color so beautiful and it's like a rich rich beautiful berry and that is my pure inspiration for everything I'm talking about in this chunk of the video but I will say I have um, both intense takes on that and I have more sheer takes too. And again, if you want to take this kind of shade on the lips and pair it with a toasty blush or a t warm toasty eye, I love that combination. I love a berry lip with like a bronzy colored eye. It's so pretty. Let's first talk about the blushes. I had to name Persona Jam. I think this is a great starting point. This is a very mum-like color here and it's more on the bright side of things. Like on the most vibrant bright end of berry for me right now. So this is really pretty sheared out on the cheeks. It's beautiful on the lips as well. It gives you that one-stop shop kind of feeling. And as I've said many times with the Persona sticks, they are creamy. They have a glide on the skin. They're very easy to blend in. You can blend them with your fingers, blend them with a brush. And they're the type of lip and cheek that feels very appropriate to use on the lip and cheek because they are so creamy and hydrating. And then the Amicole sticks. These first came into my life I want to say around the start of last year, I have several shades in them. I have a more nude shade. I have a pure fiery kind of warm red. And I have this one, which was the first one I got into. And it's the shade called Spice. Funny that it's called Spice because we just went over Spice, but this is truly a berry type of color. Look at that in comparison to the Persona. Do you want to be bright on the verge of pink or do you want to be in a deep, rich berry place? By the way, let me throw the Persona one on the lips just so we can have like a frame of reference here. Here's jam on the lips. Mm, goes on feeling like lip balm. It's berry, but it's soft and you're really feeling the pink. Now let's put on this one. This is a matte finish, by the way. Need to get out a new wipe. And anytime we're talking about that matte finish lip and cheek and how that translates on the lips, you can get anywhere from a fully opaque color that looks like my swatch here, or you can get that soft kind of blotted berry lip. So I like taking it just gently over the lips. I'm doing a gentle stipple practically. Oh, don't you love that? Mm. Still creamy enough to have some smoothness between your lips, but it's the sheer matte take on that shade right there. I love it so much. These are a phenomenal product from Sephora and amazing staying power. Now a couple of powder blushes that I really like. The one that I'm wearing, Persona just came out with jam in a powder blush. I received this in the mail. I was so excited about it. Look at that purpley color. This is what it looks like on the cheeks. I really felt like I had to have this one on in this video so you could see. I had Teddy on first, which is kind of that nude tan blush stick, and then I popped this on top. Ooh, it's so pretty. See how it doesn't show up with all that purple 
on the cheeks, it really executes on berry, but it looks a bit more purple in the pan, you see? So I think that's a home run. I think that's gonna look great with every other berry colored lip thing that I have. But I think it also look nice with all the spice stuff too. Also from the dollar store, from Dollar Tree specifically, a dollar 25 here, the LA Colors Blush in Berry Plum. I know it's sometimes hard to always spot these same things over and over again in Dollar Tree. Sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't but this shade of blush is dynamite, okay? It has, I wanna say like the softest ever satiny finish. I'm gonna swatch it here. It's gonna pair really nicely with any of these berry kinds of looks. It's gonna give you a little more lightness in terms of your berry cheek compared to jam, which I will swatch jam next to that too, sorry. See how jam is very rich. There's some depth there. This one, along the same lines color-wise, it feels like it's in the same family, but it's just a little bit softer, but still totally shows. I've loved that LA Colors blush on my cheeks. And then we will sum up blush by talking about the combo of it all. This is the Patrick Ta Duo here. And please throw up a like, throw up a thumbs up for your girl who is going between LA Colors and Patrick Ta, okay? Patrick Ta Double Take Cream and Powder Blush. The shade is She's Wanted. This is one of the newer ones he released and it's deep and dark. You know I love having a range. Dark shades have range. So we've got our cream up here, our powder down here. Patrick Ta's method is to use the powder first and then you put the cream on top and the skin just kind of moves a little bit more. It has a little bit more of a sheen. It's tough to show opaque swatches of blushes because you're never wearing it quite that intense on the cheeks. This brings a little more red. So that's the powder. And then the cream, there's your cream color right beside it. Um, you know, it's getting sheared out a little bit here, but it feels like the powder blush in this duo has a little more red in it and the cream has a bit more purple, but there's the window there that protects it. You got the mirror, it's very luxe feeling, but um, I do not regret this purchase one bit because I can wear that with a little more intensity or I can wear it super soft. You can make it almost look like soft, pink if you just go lightly with this stuff. It's so much fun. If you're a blush lover, that product is a real treat to yourself. I'm gonna wipe off what's on my lips right now because we're gonna get into some lip colors. So what I first had on at the start of the video, I was wearing this CoverGirl Clean Fresh Balm and this is in the shade Bliss You Berry. This is so pretty. This is always handy for me, so I might need to actually purchase a second one. For a while I kept it in my bathroom and lately it's been in like my little kind of coin purse thing. It's always the thrown on shade in the afternoons for pickup, it feels like. Look at that. Can you say works for anything? It totally works for any look I have on. It's the softest dipping your toe into berry and it's a berry shade with the absence of a pinky purpliness if you don't really love that. So I think that's a must for really anybody. I added to that earlier with my Superstay Ink Crayon in the shade Settle For More. Ideal mum shade right there. That's my mums. And these matte ink crayons, they last and last, but they're nice just to kind of accentuate things too. You know, like, oh, I just want that to look a little more finished. I want it to look like it's got a little more strong berry color. Fine do it. You won't have the amazing staying power you would have if you wore this on its own, coming in contact directly with your lips. But you know, that's fun. It added a little something. Like Elle Wood said, gives it a little something extra. I feel like you need to see that Super Stay Ink Crayon all alone, but we're still talking about sheer things overall right now. So this, you know, is the soft, easy way to do that. The Lifter Gloss in the shade Taffy. Ooh, it's another one of those kind of black honey moment type of products where you look at it, you think, oh, it's so dark. No, it's not really that dark but it's kind of the perfect amount of color if you're feeling like a soft berry. Taffy, look at this. Soft berry, soft mum. We're calling it mum. Okay, it's mumming. Mmm, come on. Like that's all I have on right now. And you guys fully know how to bump this up. This, you know, put this underneath and you've got the shine on top of the perfect mum color. I guess this is sort of serving as the lip liner recommendation for this part of the video. Let's put this on solo now. Oh, my lips are gonna be ready for a nice break, a nice balm after all this. Oh, come on, berry. Fall berry, mum vibes. Couple more lipsticks to show 
and then you can get on with your day. This one from Patrick Ta, I have enjoyed this so much. This is the matte lipstick in the shade Complicated. So this is Maybelline Settle for More, and then this is the Patrick Ta. And I wanted you to see this as an option because it has so much more brown. But it still kind of makes me think berry. And I've just really liked this one. It totally screams fall to me, but it's got a little more rustiness in there, and the depth of it all makes me think berry, but it's really not got all the purple. So there's another option for you if you like that. It's honestly really close to Live on the Edge that we mentioned earlier. Live on the Edge has more rust. See how this still is walking that berry line. One more thing, one more option. It's a Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick. It's a lipstick with range. It's very dark, but it can look any number of ways. Can you name the lipstick? It's an iconic one from the Super Lustrous line, and it is called Black Cherry. This is a cream lipstick. It looks extremely dark, okay? In a swatch, full on, there you have it. Very dark, rich, creamy berry. Less pink in it compared to Settle for More. Now, the way I like to wear this, we're kind of doing a Vlade thing. It won't look super even at first, but I'm stippling. And then give it some dabs. And you get that drugstore berry blotted lip. And you might think about depositing a little more color on the outsides, sharing it out more in the middle. Look at that black cherry. Mm. It can go that strong, or it can go like that. Don't you love that? I mean, that's it. This range of berry right here, plus the spice that we threw in there, but I'm so proud of this lineup. And again, with the gloss, let's take that black cherry and let's put the taffy gloss on top. And don't forget, if you like shimmer, if you like that shimmery spotlight, go to LA Colors Moisturizing Gloss in Topaz, go to LA Colors Moisturizing Gloss in Tickled Pink. Those both are great little spotlighting shades, but this is taffy. And by the way, a way to sort of prevent depositing too much lifter gloss on your lips at one time, work off the side or the back of the applicator. I'm going off the side here. Oh, this is a great finale move. Yes. Mmm. Beautiful shine, but even though it's kind of glam and it's berry, this color has an effortless sort of look to it. It's mumming, as we say. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for requesting this video. I hope it was helpful to you. We've covered a lot of price ranges, covered a lot of strengths in the product from very strong, bold colors to the more sheer options that can work for pretty much anyone. I'm sure I'll finish this video and I'll continue seeing things throughout my collection that I'll wish I included, but I'm sure this has been long enough for you guys. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section. Please share your own recommendations in the comments too. And are there any other other completely different color schemes that you enjoy for fall on the lip and cheek outside of just maybe the cinnamon spice category and the berry category. Do you like getting into reds for fall? I think reds are a great option too, but this is kind of just where my head's at right now when I'm thinking fall lip and cheek. So thanks again for your time, everyone. I hope you have a great day and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.